Hey guys, this is Chef John Paul, corporate chef from Shift Pixie, and I'm gonna talk to you about something that might be uncomfortable for some of us. So, it's the metric system. This is very uncomfortable for me. I, I don't know what to say. I know, I know. Now, technically, we converted to the metric system in this country during the Jimmy Carter era around 1978, and proof of that was the two liter Coke bottle. All right? <laughs> But when somebody tried to sell liters of gasoline at a gas station, they almost dragged them out into the street. So why are people so stuck on this and why are they so afraid of the metric system? Well, today, I'm hopefully gonna talk you into a newer, simpler way of measuring your stuff by using the metric system. Now, let me ask you something. How many feet are in half a mile? I'll wait. Okay, you get me? We've been using miles forever. But it would take people a while to think there's what, 5,280 feet in a mile? Where did that come from? Where did a foot come from? 12 inches and a foot. I mean, of all, I mean, and then a yard is 36 inches. And how does that convert into miles and hectares and... Uh, it's crazy. Well, it started with body parts. <laughs> so back in the day, a foot was actually the measurement of the king or queen's foot. And that, they became the ruler, get it? That's where ruler comes from. It was the measurements of the ruler that became the rule of measurement. So, you've heard of feet. If you're in the horse business, you've probably heard of hands. So hands are a measurement of height. And it's the distance between the pinky and the thumb of the sovereign, king, queen, whatever. And you would measure that distance up the side of a horse. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. And then everything got broken in half from 16. So there's 16 ounces to a pound. There's 16 ounces to a pint. The, um, I cut that in half. That's a half a pound, which is eight ounces. Then I get into four ounces. Then I get into two ounces. Then we start splitting and then we get into, <laughs> oh my God. What are these things? Okay, eighths of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon. Um, let's suppose I wanted to convert a recipe um, by, let's say it calls for one tablespoon, but I want it to be five ounces instead. Convert that tablespoon, multiply it up to get five ounces for me. Oh wait, once again, it's crazy math because you're using halves and quarters and eighths and all the stuff we ran away from in high school. Metric system, all I have to do is say at 10. So look at this, on the side of this cup, every cup has a comparison. It's only multiples of 10. This is in God knows what. This becomes much easier. Now here's the cool part. 500 milliliters weighs 500 grams. What? 16 ounces does not weigh 16 ounces because for that you need fluid ounces, which is a completely different measuring system. You get me? Metric. Try it. It's easy. When I first started using the metric system, I was in Germany and a chef came over to me and he said, I want you to do this recipe and it was a metric and I went nuts. I was like, ah. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> I went over to the chef and I said, excuse me, fine chef. I do not know of this metric system you Europeans use. Can you please teach me? And he's like, yes. Put the scale down and add potatoes until it says 500. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Get a metric scale. That's all you have to do. Everything I do comes off a metric scale. Now, why a scale and why not volume? This is inconsistent. A scale is always consistent. So I actually measure my liquids on a metric scale because this tells me that a 500 milliliter measure in here should equal 500 grams on a scale. And it always does. So my conversions are super simple. If I'm weighing flour, it's always gonna be consistent. If I'm measuring flour by the cup, it's always gonna be inconsistent because how much did I dig into that flour? How tight did I pack it? Did I sift it first? A cup of flour can wear, weigh anywhere between three and five ounces. That's crazy. So what I'm saying is depending on how I scoop it, I could have double the flour that the recipe calls for and never know it because I'm using a volume measure. If I throw it on a metric scale and it calls for 500 grams of flour, if it's fat, skinny, off to one side, 500 grams is always gonna be 500 grams. It's infallible. 
So I encourage you, give it a shot. If you have a scale at home, it's already a metric scale. If it has ounces on it, it has grams on it. So just flip it over to grams. And then all of a sudden you're gonna, you're gonna learn about the miracle of ratios. So if I'm doing uh, salad dressing, that's three parts oil to one part vinegar. Okay. So I put 25 grams of vinegar, I put 75 grams of oil. It will always be the same. Every time I make that recipe, it will be identical because it's all being done by weight. Pretty cool? I think it's cool. I think you should try it. And if you have a cool weight story or you have some cool angle that'll make this easier for people to get it right every single time, I want you to reach out to me. Chef JP at Chip Pixie Labs. We're doing cool stuff and I want you to be part of it.